Good morning and welcome to Church of the Redeemer. We are a just peace and open and affirming congregation. No matter where you are on life's journey, you matter and you are welcome here. Thank you for continuing this warm welcome that happens every Sunday morning between 10 and 1030 as we greet one another, as we discuss things of the church uh, in a casual and warm and welcoming fashion. It is one of my favorite parts of the week. In addition to worshiping here on Zoom, recordings of this service will be on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel on Monday. Thank you to everyone who continues to bring food for the Westlake Food Pantry. Last night, our community meal uh, was our community meal with Clegg Road United Church of Christ, and 180 meals were distributed. Thank you to the volunteers who went out into the community to serve those who are food insecure. Next month, Bill and Elaine and whoever else, uh, Amy and Jeff and whoever else might want to help will be cooking. And if you are available to um, volunteer in June, there will be several folks who are missing that are regular volunteers. And that is always the last Saturday of the month. Next Sunday, beginning next Sunday, May 2nd, we will resume having outdoor worship services every other Sunday at 9 a.m. Um, it will be on the lawn. You are invited to bring your lawn chair, to bring your mask for a brief service on the front lawn in front of the cross. Um, and there is a phone number printed in the grapevine to find out if we are having it due to weather. So call that number on Sunday morning and there will be a message that tells you whether we are having outside worship uh, on that Sunday. When I went back and looked at the volunteers I have recognized over these past several weeks, I realized I was woefully remiss in not recognizing Emily Humphrey before this. While I know she would prefer to remain in the background, it is not an exaggeration to say that I could not lead worship during this time of, of using technology without her. She controls all of the music in the service and in addition provides patient help to those who need assistance with logging on, turning on cameras and turning on audio. And she also sends me friendly reminders when after more than a year, I too forget to unmute myself. Emily, I would be lost without you. Please continue to be vigilant about wearing your mask, washing your hands and not gathering in large groups. If everyone at a gathering has been vaccinated, the CDC has now said it is safe to gather without masks in small groups. While the vaccines are effective against the variants, those who are not yet vaccinated because of age or choice now run a very high risk of contracting the virus from the variants. Please continue to be vigilant and recognize that receiving a vaccine is a way to not only care for yourself, but to care for each other. We will again participate in the Hunger Walk this year to be held on June 5th. The walk is being held at the Cleveland Metro Parks Zoo. We have a small group of walkers at this time, so if you are interested in participating, please contact Andy Bischoff for more information. If you are unable to walk but would still like to donate and support this worthy cause, you may send in a check or simply go to our webpage where there is a button on the homepage for you to donate electronically. Speaking of our webpage, have you gone and checked it out? Most new visitors these days go to a webpage to learn about a church to, before they come to visit. And ours is kept up to date and easy to navigate. 
two things that are important for the life of a church. Please visit it and send your friends to it as well. The web address is simple. It is corucc.org. The church is continuing to function even if the building remains closed for worship. Thank you to everyone who has continued to practice supporting the church with your monetary gifts. I know it is easy to forget to honor God in this way when we are not sitting in the pews, but it still remains important to the life of the church. You may continue to mail your gifts or donate online via the website. Thank you for being with us today as we continue to participate in worship using technology. We know that no matter where we are, God is with us. One more announcement that I almost forgot. Um, we are in the process of having new lighting installed at Church of the Redeemer. You would be amazed at the number of people who say, there's no church near the corner of Clegg and Center Ridge Road because we are so poorly, have been so poorly lit that people drive by and don't even realize we are there. So certainly by Tuesday evening, we hope, um, there will be new lighting on, in the front of the church so that we can be seen and recognized by the community as you drive by Center Ridge Road. So I invite each of you to take time to come drive by your church to see the new lighting and the way that we are sharing God's light to the community. On this fourth Sunday of Easter, we will hear the familiar story of the Good Shepherd. As you prepare for worship, I invite you to consider how it is that you spread God's love in the world. Let us be in an attitude of worship as we listen to the prelude.
please join me in the call to worship? The call of Christ is this, love one another. The law and the prophets teach this, love one another. The world calls us to fulfill our desires, but Christ commands us to love one another. We do this best not in word or speech, but in truth and action. Beloved, let us love one another. For Christ first loved us. Come, worship God, who is love. Please join us in singing hymn number 248, Such Perfect Love My Shepherd Shows. join me in the prayer of invocation. Loving God, may your spirit fill us in a way that leads us into worship, rooted in humility and growing in love. Help us to be humble as Jesus was, lifting up those with whom we have contact, leading us to practice servanthood with such devotion that your name is exalted through us. Help us to be loving as Jesus was, in a way that excludes no one and brings your reign to this hurt and broken world. Remind us to love boldly, realizing that the cost of love gives its value, the sacrifice of love renews its life, and the tenacity of love makes it enduring. May we build one another up and express love. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Well, I am going to say that unless um, you hear enough of me in this service, that unless there are children that are lurking in the background, Melissa Hilly, um, I am going to move on um, to the uh, choir anthem. Thank you. 
Today's first reading is Psalm 23, another psalm by David and well known by many people. However, you won't be able to follow me word for word by memory because today's version is from the Message Bible, an idiomatic paraphrasing translation. The Message Bible was written by Eugene Peterson, an American Presbyterian minister and was published in 2002. Reverend Peterson had been a pastor for 35 years and he decided to make the biblical text current, fresh, and understandable. He wanted it to be relevant to the conditions of the people reading and hearing it. So here is Psalm 23 as translated in the Message Bible. The second reading is from 1 John. This is another letter written by John, only this time not to a specific church. He sent it to several Gentile congregations and it was written for believers everywhere. He wrote it to give these new believers confidence and faith in Christ. As an apostle, he could speak firsthand because he walked and talked with Jesus, saw him heal and heard him teach. In today's reading, John speaks of love. He says that love is not just a feeling, but an action that produces selfless and sacrificial giving. I'm reading from chapter three, verses 16 through 24. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ died for us. And we too ought to lay down our lives for our sisters and brothers. If you have more than enough material possessions, and see your neighbors in need, yet close your hearts to them, how can the love of God be living in you? My children, our love must not simply be words or mere talk, it must be true love, which shows itself in action and truth. This then is how we'll know we belong to the truth. This is how we'll be confident in God's presence. Even if our consciences condemn us, we know that as that God is greater than our consciences and that God knows everything. And if our consciences do not condemn us, my friends, then we have confidence before God 
and we will receive whatever we ask from God's hand because we keep the commandments and do what is pleasing in God's sight. The commandments are these, that we believe in the name of God's own, Jesus Christ, and that we love one another as we were told to do. Those who keep these commandments live in God, and God lives in them. We know that God lives in us by the Spirit given to us, and our God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading this morning is from the 10th chapter of John, verses 11 to 18. I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd would die for the sheep. The hired hand, who is neither shepherd nor owner of the sheep, catches sight of the wolf coming and runs away, leaving the sheep to be scattered or snatched by the wolf. That's because the hired hand works only for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. In the same way, Abba God knows me and I know God. And for these sheep, I will lay down my life. I have other sheep that don't belong to this fold. I must lead them too, and they will hear my voice. And then there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why Abba God loves me, because I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes my life from me. I lay it down freely. I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it up again. This command I received from my Abba. May God add a blessing to the hearing and the understanding of these words. Let us pray. Good shepherd, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. You who are our rock, our redeemer, and our shepherd. Amen. It is difficult in our non-agrarian society that we live in, in suburban, in the suburbs, to make a direct parallel to what a shepherd does. But the closest that I could come to this week was for teachers who are fiercely protected, protective of their students. And yet, as one teacher explained to me, sometimes when that door shuts, you feel like you're among the wolves. Teachers or good teachers know their students and know their struggles, even when the students feel like the wolves they protect them. I have had a few teachers in my lifetime um, who I knew really cared about me. And perhaps not surprisingly, two that come to mind were music teachers of mine. They were both high school band directors. John Ulrich, I only had for one year but he developed my love of marching band. He knew his kids as he referred to us and we knew he cared about each of us. He became sick during my sophomore year. I went to a three-year high school instead of a four-year high school. And so he was no longer able to teach high school music. And so the last two years of my high school experience, Gary Yunk was my high school band director. He had been John Ulrich's student teacher, so he was familiar with the school and the students, and he knew how to handle high school students, perhaps because as a very young teacher, he wasn't that far from having been in high school himself. I will always remember that my senior year of high school, when I knew I was going off to the University of Kansas to study music therapy, he handed me a dollar and he said, 
put this someplace that when you are really wanting to do something and when a dollar still bought something, you have this dollar so that you don't have to call home and ask for more money, but that you have this dollar. I tucked that dollar into my favorite music book in my favorite piece, and it stayed there for a number of years until exactly that situation arose. I have not forgotten that. Both of those teachers made us feel like we were a part of their flock and not because they were the hired hands, but because they truly knew how to shepherd high school students with all of their hormones and crises and drama, how to leave that high school, not only better musicians, but better people. Our scripture is about Jesus as the good shepherd the one who knows us and understands us and still loves us. He loved us enough to die on the cross, yes, but more importantly, he loves us enough to have been resurrected. The image of the Good Shepherd is a familiar one. There are lots and lots of pictures that we have seen, mostly of a white Jesus with blonde hair and blue eyes, as the Good Shepherd. It is the warm, caring Jesus, the Shepherd, the Hallmark card Jesus, not the grittiness of Jesus, the Shepherd. And while warm and caring may be fair depictions, I believe the better word is the loving Jesus. Nowhere in this passage does it talk about Jesus loving us, his flock, but his actions tell us that he does. Actions like being willing to die for us, Desiring to have a relationship with us, knowing us, and allowing us to know Jesus. And also loving us enough to show us how it is we are to welcome others. Jesus lives his life with love as a verb as how, how we live and what we do, just as the writer of 1 John said. Love as a, a verb. And Jesus calls us to do the same. The other thing that this passage focuses on is resurrection. It is not just that Jesus would die, but that Jesus would be resurrected. God loved us enough that Jesus would be resurrected. One of the commentators that I read this week, Cheryl Lindsay, who writes for UCC Sermon Seeds, suggested that the cross that hangs above me every Sunday glorifies the crucifixion rather than the resurrection. But I have to say, I disagree. The cross that we see that hangs in our sanctuary is empty. And that empty cross does remind us of the violent way in which Jesus died. But the empty cross reminds us that Jesus is no longer there, not because he died but because he lives. We are called to live like Jesus. Yes, we will always fall short, but that does not mean that we do not keep trying. So what does it mean 
to live love as a verb. It means that when we, that we speak up, when we hear hate language being used against our Asian American and Pacific Islander siblings. This Sunday, we recognize Pacific Islander and Asian American ministries in the UCC. This minority group has faced much hate in the past 18 months due to the coronavirus. Living with love as a verb means we correct people when they use the term China virus or China flu to refer to the coronavirus. It means that while we can be grateful to the jurors in Minneapolis in the Derek Chauvin case for convicting him of the crimes, we cannot call it justice. Justice would be if George Floyd was still alive. What we witnessed was accountability. Living with love as a verb means we not only know there is more work to be done, but we are willing to learn and to do the work. It means that we refuse to be silent about rape and sexual violence in our world. This Sunday is also a Sunday in which we recognize break the silence. A Sunday which was created after a 2019 General Synod resolution. I will tell you that while many assume that this applies only to women, men are also victims. Breaking the silence means that we acknowledge that it occurs and work to eradicate it in our society. Living with love as a verb means that we are willing to talk about it. Finally, living love as a verb means things that I haven't even thought of yet that you haven't even thought of yet. All of the things I listed are important ways, but they are not the only ways. Two weeks ago, our youth shared ways that they were living love. This week, some of them saw organizations to which they donated, like the Equal Justice Initiative, speaking out about the Chauvin verdict. Our youth can and have shown us ways to live with love as a verb. We do not glorify the brutality of the crucifixion, but neither can we ignore it. Jesus died because he spoke up for the oppressed, because he worked for real justice, and because he acknowledged the pain and suffering in this world. But he worked to change all of those things, and because of that, the authorities had him killed. This passage reminds us that Jesus was willing to die on that cross, but the cross did not have the final word. Resurrection followed. The good shepherd is our model, and our faith tells us we must follow. Author A.R. Lucas says, to be grateful, to be hopeful, to be brave, to be forgiving, to be proud is to love. To be a central verb in our English language. Go out, determined to be love as a verb. Amen. Please join me in hymn number 252, Savior Like a Shepherd, Lead Us.
We come to the time in our service in which we come before God. We come before God with our prayers, with our concerns, with our joys. This week, I would ask that everyone keep Leslie Patswall in their prayers. She is out at Avon Cleveland Clinic Rehab and is facing some obstacles in her recovery. And she asked that I share that she was facing obstacles and asked for your prayers. Let us begin with a time of silent prayer. God, who loves us like a shepherd loves his flock, we gather to glorify your resurrection and your life. We give thanks for your forgiveness and grace. As the sheep are welcoming their lambs at this time of year, we know that you welcome us into your reign, even while you call us to work to bring it into existence. We come with joys and concerns, knowing you hear them all and respond in your way. Our prayers include those who continue to live daily with the struggles of infertility, those who face loneliness, those who live in war-torn countries, those who lead our country amongst great division, those who seek to institute justice, those who live among violence and face violence from those who are called to protect, those who are grieving, those who are facing long recovery from accidents or illness, those we now name out loud. Leslie. 
Yeah. Emily B. Steve. Diane. Uncle Jerry. All the powerless. Dad. All the prisoners. Yeah. Um, Burn victim, Don. Daniel Zach. Zach family. Ken. Amy. Loving Shepherd, we know you hear our prayers. Help us to be accepting of your will. We pray all of these things in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Creator, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, be done on earth on as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for Amen. Amen. Please join me in singing hymn number 498. Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. May you love God so much that you love nothing else too much, and may you fear God just enough that you need fear nothing else at all. Go in peace.